Well, I am so honored to uh, have Pastor Israel here this morning. Uh, I've been following him on Facebook. I, I had no idea who he was. And through uh, a, a friend that I'm getting to know better and better and better, uh, Pastor Reverend Tim from Saskatoon. Wow. Um, you know what? I, I met uh, Reverend Tim last May at Canmore. And uh, he says to me, he says, uh, he says, so what do you do? I said, I pastor. I says, what do you do? And he says, I travel to Israel. I says, oh, cool. And he says, you should come sometime. I said, not interested. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I, sorry, but I'm not interested. And uh, I said, but you should take my wife because it's on her bucket list to go to Israel. And I said, uh, you should take her. And more we talk. Then he says, um, I said, so what do you do there over there? And he says, well, you know what? I, I do some touring, but I speak in some Russian churches. And I stopped. And I says, excuse me? He says, yeah, um, I'm hooked up with uh, Pastor Israel, and he's got some Russian churches over in Israel. <laughs> all right, all you Russians just settled out. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I says, really? And because we had, Jew when I lived in Kazakhstan, we had Jewish people that attended our Bible study that when the doors opened, they left and went to Israel. And I says, you know what? I would be interested in going down there just to see if that's where they are now. I have no idea. But maybe they're in one of your churches. I, I have no idea. But I want to say this. I watched the YouTube of you and uh, Sid Roth. Wow, the persecution that you got when you moved into your, I don't know if that's where you are now, but the, that's where you are now. Man, the persecution that you got. I was like, I don't know, us North American Christians are pretty, what would I say? Insulated, Insulated <laughs> wusses, laid back. Come on up here, Pastor Israel. Let's welcome him. Let's stand and welcome him. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you. You may be seated. Uh, I just have a question for your tech people. Do we have a video ready or, or later? Yes? So, uh, you know, people said to me in Israel, uh, one video is, or one, one picture is better than a thousand words. So I just would love to show you in one minute just some footages of what God is doing in the land. So please. Sorry. Voice of Judah Israel is a mover and shaker in a land that is being awakened. And we are witnessing revival in the making. We are a dynamic Israeli ministry that is making a difference in the land. Touching hearts, changing lives, spreading the gospel with power, planting new congregations, feeding and clothing the poor. Caring for families and building stronger communities. Discipling a generation of young leaders. Voice of Judah Israel, the revival has begun. Praise God. Uh, it's amazing to see what God is doing in Israel today. And uh, there is many details of the Bible. You know, normally when you live in North America, you see just general pictures, general prophecies. But when you live in the land and you walk the land, you see all the details of the Bible, and it's just amazing. Even, you know, we've been speaking about uh, Russian Jews. But gen generically, we call them Russian Jews, but Russian-speaking Jews, whatever, they're from Ukraine, Poland, or uh, north of Israel. Now, when you read your Bible, and you see uh, prophecies, and most of the prophecies emphasizing specifically uh, northern Exodus, when they come back from the north, back to the land of Israel, now, when you go with the map, 
uh, to the north from Israel, you come into you know, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, Ukraine, and Russia. Actually, line goes from Jerusalem straight to Moscow, which is representative of Russian-speaking world. Uh, so it's amazing. And you know, Jeremiah 16 says, they will come, says the Lord. You're not going to say anymore, blessed be the Lord who brought us out of Egypt. Come on, it's the greatest exodus, greatest miracles. But I said, no, you're, you're not going to say it anymore. But you're going to say, blessed be the Lord who brought us out from a northern country and then all the countries. Now, uh, living in the land today, we see those prophecies make sense, literally. You know, and it was uh, like uh, two stages. Uh, the Israel was reestablished by what we call today Russian Jews uh, over 70 years ago. And now, in the last couple of decades, we see big movement of Russian Jews coming back to Israel. Yeah. And they come in and they are very open for the gospel. They are really receiving Jesus uh, with the right approach, you know, with the Jewish approach. When they see it's a Jewish thing, it's okay to be Jewish and believe in Jesus. You're not losing your heritage, uh, but actually you gain it. And they open their hearts, and of course, Holy Spirit comes, and we see lots and lots of transformation for all Israel, but specifically for Russian Jews. So even that part is in the Bible. Come on, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're speaking about really... Word of God, Bible, prophecies, ancient prophecies that come in to pass now in our generation. Not only 70 years ago when Israel was reestablished as a country, but actually today. And I, 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 you know, I need more time to tell you all the signs and wonders, all the miracles and all the circumstances and fulfill, fulfillment of, of prophecies today. Last year, last two years, there are so many. The one, one of the examples? The prophecy that came to pass, I think like three years ago. Now, it was prophesied by prophets 2,600 years ago. Okay, can you imagine? It's a little bit too far back, right? 2,600 years ago. And it came to pass just three years ago. Uh, it's Isaiah 60. It says, you will see and you will rejoice. You will see and your heart will be radiant because richness of the sea shall be given to you. I remember one morning I was uh, uh, reading my Bible on the coast. I live by the Mediterranean, by the coast, reading my Bible, and I see uh, a new uh, rig, the gas and oil station in the, uh, in the sea offshore. And I was uh, watching it and reading my daily readings, and it was the word. I get shocked. I really stand up in my you know, coffee place like, really? The prophet spoke about richness of the sheep shall be given to you 2,600 years ago, and it's happened just three years ago. Wow. How did prophets knew about richness, you know, underground, offshore? It's amazing. Right. You know, and again, when you live out far away, you hear about, okay, Israel get oil and gas, you say, okay, good for you guys, hallelujah. <laughs> it's in the Bible, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> And our people should have read it more carefully and find it earlier, but anyway. So, <laughs> praise God. And it can go on and on and on what God is doing. So, all of this restoration thing, it's a prophetic sign for us, Amen. for Christians, for a church of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because God is faithful and is yes. keeping His word. Yes. And can you imagine, if you will be picky with, let's say, this one, you would wait for 2,600 years, uh, uh, 2, years until it happened. But it happened. Amen. Just on the right time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So uh, there is many, many stories. But uh, the most wonderful thing, again, God is faithful. He promised long ago. And now he's keeping his word. And I also want to make a connection because all of us, as Christians, who live here in North America or in any other parts of the world, we are connected and we all have the word of God. Yeah. You have his promises yes. for your life. Right. You know, pastor make very strong point. He said somebody came here and he learned not how to believe in Jesus, not just how to trust Jesus in general, you know, be a good Christian, but he learned how to take word of God and to learn to stand on it, yeah. build yeah. your life on it. You know, be very specific, you know, be very, very intensive, you know. Yes, we all need it. Do we have promises of God for your life? Do we have prophetic word, word of the Bible for your life? So be encouraged. 
God going to make it. God going to help you. God going to lead you, and you will see how his promises come into pass for you, your life, your family, your daughter, your sons, your parents. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's open our Bibles in uh, Acts chapter 3. And before I can, I will continue. I will tell you a few stories about us and what we do in Israel. You've seen some video, but I will tell you briefly uh, my story. <clears throat> you know, in Israel, that's what we do. We always tell our stories. You know, even Jesus, suppose uh, some guys were following Jesus and said, Rabbi, where do you live? He didn't tell them. It's not your business, right? He tell them, come and see, <clears throat> come and see. So people uh, in Israel, they're not only listening to the words, they want to see lives they want to see fruits they want to see results okay so uh, <clears throat> my story uh, i moved to israel from crimea when i was uh, 22 years old and uh, you know uh, the revival hit crimea we had wonderful time i grew up in jewish family i was dreaming to move to israel one day when good doors will be open because my family were locked some escaped and moved to uh, to Israel 70 years ago, and some were locked in, in uh, Crimea, actually. Uh, so uh, they couldn't leave. I grew up with my grandparents' talks, conversations in the kitchen behind closed doors, you know. It's, 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 it's dangerous. We can get to prison for that. Being Zionist, but there is land of our ancestors. We, we're going to be there one day. So I grew up with this dream and vision and, you know, dream. But then I get saved at the age of 18. And my life changed. And I said, I don't care about Israel. I, th I don't care about anything, but I want to preach the gospel to all my friends. Hallelujah. So I went to Bible school. It's actually a faith Bible school in the, the, the Swedish branch, uh, European Bible school. And uh, coming back, revival came to my city. We, had, uh, we have seen so many miracles and salvations everywhere you go. You know, like in the movies, uh, like in the classical stories, you see dressed up, uh, let's say girls, one of the stories downtown, going party, uh, you come and say, hello, I have wonderful news for you, Jesus loves you, and they will break in tears, <laughs> right there, repenting, receiving Jesus, like one minute conversation, people receive Jesus, hallelujah, that was wonderful days, you know, uh, and my minister was an evangelist, so the evangelists don't want to leave these places, you know, so I, I forget my dreams, and I was totally engaged with the revival in Crimea, and uh, then one day, I had an amazing uh, experience and encounter with God, and eventually God spoke to me, not in the future, not when you will retire and go like, you know, to fulfill the prophecies to go to the land of your ancestors, but now. It's changed my life. I just married with my wife, you know, it changed my life. So uh, we say, yes, Lord, it wasn't easy, but we moved to Israel, and one of the words God gave us, it was, you're going back to Israel, you're going back to your land of, land of your ancestors to prepare the way for me, to prepare my nation to be able to receive me, Jesus. That was powerful. I say, yes, Lord, hallelujah. I knew there is no revival in Israel. I knew uh, the churches actually, they were underground. Not officially, but in fact, they were underground. Uh, it was difficult to find any believers in the land. Uh, so it was different times, different Israel. We moved there and really God uh, blessed us and he gave us many breakthroughs and we spent first 10 years in Tel Aviv uh, work, working with the local church and then 14 years ago, God sent us to Ashdod to plant uh, a first ever Hebrew speaking congregation in the city. And Ashdod is a city of 250,000 people. It's a big city, one of the five biggest cities in Israel. And we still have only one Hebrew-speaking congregation in the entire city. So can you imagine we have a couple of Russian-speaking small ones and us. So uh, that's the reason for persecutions, uh, Pastor, uh, really, because uh, we were first who came to preach the gospel in Hebrew language for Israelis, you know, to, to build foundations for the future revival. And we, had, we got uh, all the riots and we've been uh, persecuted and my pictures and my wife's pictures with my home address were on the walls of city again and again and again. Everywhere you go, you, I will see my pictures on the, on the pillars, on the bus stops, all over. It's illegal, but uh, the police couldn't stop it, couldn't find who did it, and it's repeated itself uh, for years. I remember walking in the city 
and see my pictures, and see my pictures, and see my pictures, and my wife, and my home address. Welcome home. Uh, you know. So I remember uh, it was tough. Today I can smile, we have breakthrough, praise the Lord, but it was difficult. But I can tell you the m most uh, uh, bright memories I have from this time, it's attacks of fear, you know, the enemy, the witchcraft was attached to that. It, not, not only physical persecutions, but also uh, accompanied with uh, witchcraft, you know, curses. It's real stuff. You know, we're not, I've been, I've, been, I've been visited in the nights. I had some guys walking in my house, uh, spiritual guys, and we've been praying, proclaiming the blood of Jesus, and they all flee. We have promises again, right? God said, you know, the, the spiritual world is real, and we faced it, really. Fierce at night, but, you know, Jesus is stronger, and the moment we recognize the battle is not only physical, it's not only pictures, and not only riots and being, being followed, but actually there is witchcraft, then we say, hey, we're not afraid of witchcraft. We're not afraid of de devil and demons, you know, we don't. And we started to pray, and God really gave us victory, and, uh, you know, enemy just flee and lose. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But also one of the uh, brightest memories of those, this season of few years of heavy, intense persecutions was grace and encouragement of the Holy Spirit. I remember first day when we had a thousand Orthodox protesters, you know, the Israeli Orthodox, the white and black uh, guys, they came to the doors of our church. Can you imagine? We came to the meeting to celebrate Jesus, and we had thousand protesters led by all the rabbis of this city. In my city, we have about 400 synagogues uh, in the only you know, Hebrew-speaking church. So they came to the church to protest, and uh, basically the chief rabbi of the city, they promised they're going to close our church down. They're going to kick out all the Christians, all the missionaries out of our city. It's a legal statement. It's a free country, but still, you know, they did it. Uh, now, I remember when it happened just very first time, you know, we come in next day to the church with the staff, with the leaders, we're praying, and I don't know what's going to be future like. Before that, it was nice and quiet. Now, I didn't know what's going to be future like. So we prayed, and it feels like, like a storm. You know, all the articles in the newspapers and the radio programs and TV programs. In one day, we become known all over the nation. So it was tough, and I remember we come together a little bit worried for what what going to be with our kids and with our families and you know all these questions. We came together, just hold our hands, and we prayed. And the moment we prayed, I can tell you, Holy Spirit just show up. He just came, an encouragement, supernatural encouragement of the Holy Spirit came, and it was just powerful. And it happened again and again and again. You open your eyes, you see a storm, you know, riots, persecutions. You open your eyes, the Holy Spirit is coming to encourage you, to be with you. And I can tell you, we're not the heroes. Uh, you know, I have some, we have some heroes in Israel. People that, preachers, evangelists, local Israeli evangelists, that like conflicts. You know, if, if people, they would put table in the downtown Tel Aviv, and if, if Israelis walk, you know, just passing by, not putting attention, ignoring them. He would jump on the table and would scream, you know, Jesus is the Messiah. And he looking for feedback, you know, like, let's fight, let's talk, you know. We have these guys in Israel. I'm not the same person. You know, uh, I like to talk one-on-one, -on -one, you know, loving conversations, let the Holy Spirit move. But so when it happened to me, I was asking, Lord, why me, Lord? What, why not Yaakov Damkani from Tel Aviv? He's the guy who likes to fight, you know. <laughs> I never get answer to my prayers for that. <laughs> I, actually, I got, you know, my grace is sufficient for you. Yes. Now, I have to tell you, when I was moving to Ashdod, I received supernatural vision. Really, it was divine, a divine uh, uh, like really open vision, divine in a meeting with God. It changed my life, and I saw big choice in the future. Uh, obviously, Israel is there, and many, many other details. So it changed my life, and we moved to Ashdod to plant a church. But God didn't show us all the difficulties and challenges and struggles and persecutions we're going to face. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, sometimes when God, when God speaking to us, and giving us mission, assignment, a call, you know, prophetic word about future. Sometimes, you're not revealing for us all the details and all the difficult parts, 
right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> but, but I learned when you do God's will, you will, have, you will have joy, you will have grace of God, you will have you know, power moments, but also you will have persecutions. And it's okay. It's in the Bible. Okay? It's okay to be persecuted for Jesus. Amen? Praise the Lord. That's the Bible. So just, I don't know why I'm, I didn't plan to share that. But anyway, maybe Holy Spirit wants to touch our hearts and prepare us for future, what we're going to face, what you, your family, you know, your kids are going to face. So praise the Lord. Now moving to Ashdod, I remember I felt in the spirit that we're going to face persecutions, severe persecutions. And I kind of tried to make myself ready, you know, to prepare myself. I would pray some time to time for that. And I can tell you, probably, you never can be really ready for what's going to happen to you in the future. Speaking of attacks and persecutions and resistance, probably not. But good news, the Holy Spirit, God himself, the Holy Spirit, always will be with you. And he will give you strength and encouragement yeah. and power and wisdom and patience. Anything we need, we have it in Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why uh, God spoke to Paul when he complained. He told to him, God told to him, my grace is sufficient for yeah. you. Yeah. In me, in him, we have anything we need and yeah. everything we need. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So that's our story. We move to Ashdod. And, and, and all these persecutions, they were worth it because uh, after a few years, we really get breakthrough and God opened for us. In the midst of persecutions, uh, you know, there's a, a word in the Psalms that says, uh, you, you uh, I don't know, I don't remember to quote it in English, something like, you prepare for me table yeah. in the... Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> yes, and, and so can you can imagine... He give you, he preparing for you table, and enemies will see the, uh, the, you know, the opposition, the demons, you know, the p people, bad people also. All of them, they will see how God is preparing his table. Hallelujah. In front of all the ad adversaries, all the enemies. Praise the Lord. That's real victory. He didn't tell you, you're going to have my shelter there, and I will, here's our shelter, yes. But they will come. They will come and he will prepare for us a table. You know, in our case, in the midst of persecutions, God did big miracle for us with building. I see you praying for building. I will pray with you guys because we are on the same. Uh, we got our building. Now we're working on all the permits. We are by the end. It's the first ever Christian building in the city of Ashdod. Wow. Hallelujah. First ever. Yes. Now, 400 synagogues and first church. Hallelujah. I feel so, so blessed. Praise the Lord. Now, our building has a roof. You know, it's a different construction there. It's all solid and concrete. And, you know, we have rockets flying sometime from Gaza. Uh, so we have, yeah, our church have bomb shelter, you know. Uh, so we have a roof, like this, the, the plain roof. And we're standing on the roof. And it's a tall, pretty tall building. So when I stand on the roof and watch in the city, and I felt like, that's the word. That's the word. Soon we're going to celebrate great opening, and all the city will see. All the rabbis will see. All the you know, opposition will see. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So may God bless you and raise your numbers and leave you to the end of this project. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now we're preaching the gospel to thousands of Israelis. Uh, God gave us different projects. It was a wonderful process, and he opened doors. And just last, uh, two weeks ago, uh, Saturday, two weeks ago, we had another evangelism campaign when we got 1,700 Israelis came to our, to, to our not to our, but in, to the building, one place, to hear the gospel. It was powerful. And I can tell you, most of them was, again, northern Jews or Russian Jews. And... Uh, 70% stand up to pray sinner's prayer. Yes. Hallelujah, 70%. Praise the Lord. Probably, I mean, not probably, it's, it's actually what happened. Since the er, days of early church, the church in Jerusalem, a uh, church led by apostles, we never had such a big numbers of Israelis coming to hear the gospel. 
it's a fulfillment. That's the days of the Bible. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's go to the Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. It says here, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, what happened in here? It's very beginning of church, right? It's an uh -huh. Acts chapter 3. Yeah. The Holy Spirit just came down. Jesus just was resurrected and death. Uh, he died and resurrected. He went to sit on his throne in heaven. Apostles started to preach the gospel. Now it's a second time, just second time, okay? Very, very beginning. Now, he's standing not here, not in Edmonton, but in Jerusalem and preaching the gospel to Israelis. Okay, there is no Gentiles yet. They will be reached later. It's only Jewish believers. And like you can see in the book of uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, Jews and proselytes, which is uh, people who converted to Judaism. Uh, you know, by the Bible, it's all Jewish people, okay? So he's speaking to his own people, to Jewish people, giving this word and he's telling them uh, the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Okay, some translation speaks about face of the Lord or presence of the Lord. You know, when we see the Lord, there is presence of the Lord. And by the way, I have to tell you, uh, Church of God, during the worship, I felt really strongly presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I can tell you, you are blessed because God is coming. Holy Spirit is visiting you during the worship and in your lives. So praise God. It's really honor and it feels like a, like a home. You know, the Holy Spirit is here, really. He's working here. Praise God. So it says, uh, times of refreshing may come. We all need those times, right? Special encounters with Jesus, you know. And it's interesting. For one side, we know Jesus is always with us, right? Holy Spirit is in us. Yeah. Yet we need these special encounters, special touch of Holy Spirit, right? When he just come, show up, and remind us that he is with us. Yeah. Not only in the Spirit, not only by faith, but also by experiencing him in his presence. Yeah. Amen? And I can tell you, as Christians, you know, pastors, leaders, Christians, many times we're kind of used to his presence, right? It's normal. You know, we have lots of uh, social outreaches for people, and we hold them in the church. Uh, which is wonderful. People are getting used to the church building, you know. So they come into the church to receive their uh, food and, you know, food packages. And we always share uh, about Christians who pray for Israel, stand with Israel. So you are a key for us to reach our Jewish people. Because if you're Israeli and you know about the word and what word thinks of Israel, you know it from your TV, from the news, you will have only bad reports, you know, and you will feel all the world is against Israel. Now, we know it's not truth. There is a whole world of Christians in the earth who understand the Bible and because of that, praying for Israel, but Jewish people, they doesn't know it. So we need you guys to come and share love of Jesus with them and just share your unconditional love, his unconditional love to you and your unconditional love for Israel because of Bible and Jesus. It's it. Very simple. It's Bible. It's Jesus and apostles, of course, right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so he's speaking here to his own people, to people of Israel. Then it says, verse 20, and that he may send Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, it's Hebrew, uh, who was preached to you before. And I told you, it's all fresh events. It just happened, right? Whom heaven must receive until times of restoration of all things. Interesting, it says, Jesus went to be in heaven. He will remain in heaven until, <clears throat> now we know a little bit more. You know, we have uh, gospels, we have uh, uh, other scriptures, but it says, until time of restoration of all things. What kind of things? <clears throat> what kind of restoration are we talking about? Sorry. <clears throat> it says here, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Hallelujah. Yeah. So he's telling here, restoration must happen. And he's telling us what kind of restoration. When God will restore, will fulfill all the promises of, of the Bible. Now, New Testament wasn't written yet. The covenant was made by Jesus, right? But the book wasn't written yet. It's all just happened. And he's speaking about 
biblical prophecies. So we're speaking about Tanakh or the Bible, Old Testament prophecies. Now, when you read Old Testament prophecies, what they are talking about, you will see 95% of the prophecies, let's say 90% of the prophecies would be about Israel, okay? Between five to 10 percent would be prophecies about neighbor countries. 90% of prophecies would be about Israel, okay? And Paul really believed it, uh, sorry, Peter. Peter really believed it and he preached it. Now, when you summarize all these prophecies, what they are speaking about, there is few main points. First, because of your sins, O Israel, you will lose your country, temple will be destroyed, and you will go to exile, okay? And now we know he's speaking about 2,000 years of exile. You go to exile, you will lose your land. Then prophets say, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Zechariah, all of them, they say, but by the end of the days, around end times, I will visit you in the nations and I will bring you back to your own land, bring you back to the same land, to the land of Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It happened 70 years ago when many, many prophecies came to pass in just in one day. Country was reborn in one day. Nation, state, you know, the, the, the Israel become a state in one day. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lots of miracles happened. And, you know, it was one big miracle. The empires come and gone to prepare the way for Israel to be able to come and possess this land. <coughs> Hallelujah. And many, many details of the Bible come to pass. And when you read it, it's just fascinating. It's just impossible become possible. Hallelujah. You know, all of it because God is faithful. Yeah. He's keeping his word. He's keeping his promises. Now, one of the crazy things that actually uh, make rabbis crazy, one of the amazing things is that Israel was restored as a country by not religious Jews, but secular Jews. They not really believed in God. I mean, just a little bit general. In general, they wasn't practicing Orthodox, but they used the Bible as a document, as a proof. We have right for this land. It's written here. God himself gave us this land. Christians, come on. God himself gave us this land. You know, Christians, do you believe in the Bible? It's there in your Bible. No. Really, that's what happened, you know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And Orthodox, you know, guys had bad time because they believed Israel should be restored by, you know, the Orthodox guys, the religious guys. No, totally secular Jews who just believe in some parts of the Bible, you know, only historical part of the Bible. Anyway, praise the Lord. Lots of miracles, war, another war, another war, but God is faithful and he's protecting Israel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then, then, the biggest prophecies, like by the beginning of the end, there will, there will be another sign for Israel and for the nations. And you know what is it? It's restor spiritual restoration of Israel. That's the revival in Israel. That's when Jewish people will trust in Jesus, when Israel will start worshiping Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans 11, it says, you know, uh, just won't come back until couple things have to happen first. And first, all, the certain number of Gentiles have to come to the kingdom, right? And then all Israel shall be saved. Hallelujah. I know many times we see it as a one, one day event and maybe final day. Eventually it will be like one day or a very short period of time. But in eventually, uh, or generally, it's a process. It's a process. And I can tell you, revival has begun. Revival has begun. We have growing churches in Israel. We have a growing number of new churches in Israel. We as a ministry contribute, contribute, contribute into that and we plant in churches in Israel. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a new day and it's a days of the Bible. Can you imagine? It's written in the Bible and it's happening now as we speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, dear Church of God, it's time to be ready. Yeah. To be ready to be used by God, to be ready to, you know, make your room bigger because many people will come to the kingdom and it's about time. You know, Israel, uh, God 
using Israel as a watch to show us what time is it. I see your watch, I see mine, it's almost the same. <laughs> and I know like I have only two hours to preach. No, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> but I see the watch and I know time is, time is coming, watch is ticking. Same with Israel. You read yeah. prophecies, yeah. you walk in the land. That's why, Pastor, you need to visit Israel. Yeah. You, know, to, you, know, God, you know, I can give you a couple more reasons. One of them, Amos 3, 9. It says, Pro proclaim from the rooftops of Ashdod. My city is Ashdod, you know. Okay. Proclaim from the rooftops of Ashdod. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Another reason, nations will come and they will bring their glory and gold. And then it says, yeah and they will proclaim the glory of the Lord. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. Somebody needs to do it. To, we need to fulfill ancient prophecies of the Bible to come and to proclaim glory of Jesus. You know, what is glory of the nations? What is glory of God? You know, of course, it's a church, you know, church of God. It's what God has done in your life, you know. Your battles, struggles, your victories, your, your experience in Him, your anointing, and you come in pull it, pull it yeah. and pour it on the young generation of Israelis, you know, to prepare them to carry revival in the land. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So uh, praise God. Let's open together Isaiah 60. Amen. It's one of my favorite scriptures yeah. because I live in the land of Israel. It says here, now God is speaking here to people of Israel. And of course, through the Holy Spirit, it's connected to all of us, each one of us. Yeah. And it says here, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Amen. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Yeah. What a message. Arise and shine, because His glory is coming. Yeah. Not with your own glory, not with your own strength, but with His glory, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then it says, For behold, the darkness shall cover all the earth and deep darkness the people but the Lord will rise over you and his glory will be seen upon you the Gentiles shall come to your light so here we can read two news good and bad now we haven't had conversations about that with your pastor so I would like to check right there on this on spot what is your culture if someone come to you and ask you I have two news for you good and bad what would you like to hear first? What is your culture? Tell me, please. Good or bad? What is first? I'm confused now. Good, bad, bad, good. <laughs> is there any culture? Or Okay, who would say good news first? Can you raise your hand? Okay, thank you. It's helped me to understand Canada, Canada Canadian ways. And uh, uh, who would say bad news first? Well, it's about 50-50. Okay. Okay, so I will tell you what we do in Israel, okay? If somebody tell me I have uh, two news, good and bad, do you want me to tell you a British joke? I know you, uh, the Canada has a queen, you know? <laughs> used to have a queen, yeah. uh, you know? Uh, that shows how British goes by, you know? And almost like Israelis. Uh, the doctor come to the patient, has a problem with his leg, and there's a question, he has, is he going to lose his leg or not? And doctor said, I have two news, good and bad. What would you like to hear first? They say, bad news. So sorry, we need to amputate your leg. You're going to lose your leg. Ooh. And what is the good news? Your neighbor want to buy your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's English humor. You know, it's not. <laughs> I know. Like Samuel said, oops. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so good or bad? In Israel, we're like English. You know, we always want to hear first bad news. Let's deal with the problem first. Okay. Let's talk about problem and then some good news, right? Some encouragement. So uh, bad news, Isaiah says here, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. And Jesus added to it lots of prophecies saying, the last days will be tough days, uh -huh. difficult days. Uh -huh. We're going to see darkness grow. We're going to see all kinds of disasters and war and rumors of war. Lots and lots of bad news. Today, if you open your TV, actually you're witnessing Jesus' words coming to pass. Because in the ancient world wasn't like that. It was different, you know. Today, 24-7, you can hear bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Even in Israel, it's all about bad news. 
you know, uh, many days. We have normal days. You know, Arabs and Jews live together, work together, study together. They are in the same classes, in the school together. They are in the same, working in the same hospitals. When you come to Israeli hospital, you will see Arab doctors and Jewish doctors. I know probably most people doesn't know that, you know, because nobody can imagine you open your TV and it says, it's nice and sunny day in Israel. Arabs and Jewish love each other. They work together. There is some problems, but in general, they all, you know, live together, share life. Come on. It would never happen. That's would never happen. You will hear only bad news. If it's all good, no reports of, of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. One crazy guy or young guy take a stone in Jerusalem, all the world will show you that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many people killed in Chicago? How many people killed in Africa? Nobody cares. Stones in, in Jerusalem, all the world is speaking about that. Why? It's in the Bible. Yeah. It's in the Bible. The, the eyes of all the earth will be on Jerusalem. Yeah upon Jerusalem, right? Yeah. So it's, all, it's a preparation for final day, for the day of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it's a, it's a, sometimes it's scary, but it should be encouraging. <clears throat> Jesus said, when you're going to see all these events, difficult events, actually, he's talking about difficult events, when you're going to see all these struggles and problems and war and crime and sin growing, he said, run to your bomb shelter and hide, right? Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He said, raise your head. Be encouraged. Rejoice. Because redemption is coming. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. That's all, all of the signs, signs of redemption, of his return. Hallelujah. Heavenly Jerusalem coming down soon. His kingdom is coming down. And before all of that will happen, God said, he will let us see his glory. His glory. So bad news coming from Israel. I can share with you lots and lots of bad news. Bad news, darkness is growing. In Israel, in the Middle East, you know, people kill each other for the sake of God. I mean, they think it's for the sake of God. You know, the, even Muslims kill Muslims. You know, their own people, different groups, uh, you, know, you know, Sunni and beheading people with prayers. What is it? Darkness will cover the earth. Yes. Yes. Sin is growing everywhere, in every nation. You know, speaking with older generation here in North America, people say, we feel like our country is hijacked. America, Canada, it's totally different today. You know, what was normal, uh, become normal today, speaking of sin, you know? And we're going yes. to see even more. Jesus said, it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. Yes. But in the midst of the difficulties, in the midst of persecutions, tribulations, problems, health problems, in the midst of economical problems, God said, God said, he will do something for you, yeah. for yeah. us, yeah. for his church. Yeah. He said, arise and shine. Yeah. Arise and shine. Yeah. It's not about us. It's about his light has come. His light that already in us will be even brighter will be even greater. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, the more darkness, the stronger dark darkness is, the better we will see his light in us. Yeah. Hallelujah. So just be ready. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it says also, this, the verse 2 says, when you speak about darkness, then it says, but the Lord will arise over you. And his glory... His glory will be seen upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter how much are you ready. And it's good to be ready. Good to prepare yourself and go strong with the Lord. But it says it will come over your life. Hallelujah. It will come over your life. And I can tell you, in my church, sometimes when we speak about this type of things, people think, oh, yeah, 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 of course, it's about my pastor. You know, he's a man of God, you know, he prays the Lord, you know, he's deep in the world, and maybe, maybe pastor and leaders. But it's not about me. I'm just a man. I'm just a person. No, 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 no. Can you do me a favor? Can you turn to your neighbor? Tell him, please, it's about you. Yes. Tell him. Remind him. He need to hear it. He need to be encouraged. It's about you. And tell, please, to other neighbor, and it's about me. It's about me. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. 
It's about you, brother and sister. It's about you. Hallelujah. So God's saying to us here, Lord himself will arise over you. And you know, every time when it's written, written in Old Testament, Lord, in Old Testament, in Hebrew, it says Jehovah, which has been Father, Father himself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very few words when it says really Adonai, which is Lord. Most of the time, it says Jehovah. Jehovah, you know, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God himself will show up. He will come and he will, you know, visit you. And of course, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit. He will rise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. You know, I've been praying some time, asking God, how is it going to be manifested? What will happen with my life? How will it work for my life? And once, God gave me a good lesson, and I will share, you, share it with you. Once I came to preach in some prophetic conference, uh, it was a big honor to be invited by this uh, prophet. You know, I, I love him. He did a lot for my life, and you know, he served me a lot. And now he invited me to preach in his conference. It was some years ago. I was excited yet worried, you know, like, ooh, what I'm going to say, you know, how uh, is a man of power, you know. So his son-in-law picked me up from the airport and after a long trip, international trip, I'm tired, exhausted, just want to get to my room, you know. Uh, so uh, I came to the car and this, I sit in the back and man was driving me and crying, literally crying. And I thought, I know he's married to, you know, pastor's daughter. So somehow I thought, just very fleshly, just thought, maybe he fight with his wife, you know, like, <laughs> now he's in trouble, you know. <laughs> that was my thoughts. Anyway, uh, we came to the hotel, we didn't talk much. Then I, 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 I've been at the meeting, Holy Spirit show up, did great, wonderful things. And after the meeting, after the service, he's come, he came to me and asked me, Israel, are you always see such a glory of God in Israel? Are you always walk with this glory and presence of God? And I was like, what are you talking about? You know? <laughs> but of course, I, I behaved, you know, like I'm listening to him, like, uh, so what do you mean? And he said, you know, when you came to my car, Holy Spirit just felt me and felt my car. I felt like Jesus himself was in my car and I cried. Did you see me crying? So, oh yeah, I've seen you crying, that's for sure. <laughs> so after that, I went to my room. And I was like a little bit shocked, like surprised. There's a good surprise, but you know, I was surprised like, Lord, what is it? I didn't feel nothing. I didn't feel a thing, a thing really. And he's saying all these words, what is it? And I heard very clearly gentle voice of the Holy Spirit saying to me, Israel, you carry my anointing and my presence is in your life. You not always feel it and you not always seen it and it is for your protection. But time to time, I will remind you that and I will encourage you by giving you this type of experiences and the testimonies. I was very blessed. And by the end, Lord said, and this anointing and presence of the Holy Spirit given to every believer in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Every believer in Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about your pastor. It's not about certain people. Yes, we carry different anointings, different calls, different you know, positions, but it's for every Christian, every man of God, every person, young and old, young and old, old and young, hallelujah, and average, and in between, and middle age, all of us, you carry his presence in your life. Maybe you don't always think about it. Maybe you don't always really feel it physically, but it's in you, and they will come. Situations will happen. When you will need it the most, Holy Spirit will show up, and he will do things through you. And you know, in that great thing, your responsibility or your part is just to say, yes, Lord, use me for your glory. Yes, Lord, use me for your kingdom, for your purposes, for you. Hallelujah. And uh, can some musicians come? Please maybe play. I would love to pray with just music or piano at least. Hallelujah. So it's all about his glory. You know, you have been redeemed. You have been yes. saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's a blessing. It's a joy. It's a blessing. It's life changing, transforming. Hallelujah. But it's not about you. It's not just for you. God has a purpose for your life. Amen. 
Hallelujah. He has purpose for your life. And he wants to use you to manifest his glory. He wants to pray through you. He wants to speak through you. He wants to touch people's life through you. And sometimes he wants just to be present when you're present. And he wants to smile through you. He wants to speak life to people, not only prophecies and prophetic words, but just life and encouragement to people at your work, in your family, in your neighborhood, in the queue, in the stores, everywhere you go. He wants to shine, hallelujah, through you. That's why God's saying to us, rise and shine, because His light has come. His glory will be seen upon you and me. His glory. So it's not about us. I know sometimes we feel like, oh man, I didn't pray enough this week. Or I didn't woke up early this morning. I didn't pray. Does God really can use me today? Maybe tomorrow I will start my day better. But it's not about you. Your part is just to be available for the Holy Spirit. Your part is just to say, yes, Lord, here am I. Send me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Do your will through my life, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you ever doubt in it, open your Bible and read stories of Israel. After all the failures, God is raising them back. After all the unfaithfulness, God is giving them grace. After all the sins, He's restoring them back. And He's saying literally, I will do all this great restoration of Israel. I will do all these great things not for the sake of Jewish people, not for the sake of Israelis, but God say, for my holy name. Ezekiel 36, for my holy name. And God speaking to the people of Israel, you have profounded my holy name. You broke my covenants. You wasn't faithful. You didn't keep my commandments. You didn't keep the light I gave you. You didn't keep call to be light of the nations at first. But God is saying, I will still do all these great things for the sake of my holy name. So Israel, it's a great reminder. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about Jesus himself. It's about kingdom. It's about kingdom of God. Amen. So let's stand up together and let's pray. I know Holy Spirit just want to touch us this morning, speak to our lives this morning. I don't know, maybe he will release some prophetic words or will remind you your assignment, your prophetic words. But just let's be in his presence and let's let Holy Spirit just speak to us, serve us, refresh us. We've been reading about time of refreshing and time of restoration. It's also time of restoration of church of God, power of God. Hallelujah. That in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you are here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We appreciate your salvation and all the wonderful and great things you have done for us, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all the miracles you have done in this house in 20 years. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done in this house in the last 20 years, for all the missions and all the travels people have done from this place to bless others, and all the people that came through this church to be blessed and encouraged and healed in 20 years. Hallelujah. And now, new decade is coming. New decade is coming. Hallelujah. I can see in the Spirit, Pastor. I can see in the Spirit Church, new decade coming. And it will be like a very strong, but soft and gentle move of the Holy Spirit. I see it's like a wave, but it's like a wave not of water, but of oil. You know, it's going slow and coming down and, and taking people in and, you know, drawing people into Jesus and kingdom. And it's powerful, big, but 
kind of soft and gentle, gentile. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So be ready, people of God. Be ready. Jesus is going to use you. Hallelujah. And also I can see in some places you will go out and you will have even greater breakthrough. Hallelujah. Through the missions than even in your own place. And that's kingdom, kingdom ways. Because it's not about us. It's about kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. I still see this picture. Oh, it's so powerful. Hallelujah. So powerful, Jesus. Put in our hearts, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We pray. Yes, Lord. Come. Come with your visitation. Come with your power. Come with your glory, Yeshua. In the ways you want it, Lord. Not in the ways we study about our different revivals, Lord, but in the ways you want it here. You want it now. You want it in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I'm praying in the name of Jesus for everybody who is here. Oh, Jesus. Lord, oh, thank you, Jesus. Touch every one of us. Touch every single person. Touch, Lord. I can hear in the Spirit God is speaking to you. Don't worry. Trust in me. Your son is going to serve me. Your son will be back. And will be back with power. Your daughter will come back. Hallelujah. You will see my restoration, says the Lord, in your family. You will see grace of God. You feel like you cannot help, you cannot change a thing, but God is saying, I didn't give up on your children. I didn't give up on them. Just keep believing, keep trusting, and keep loving with patience. Loving with patience. Loving with patience. Yes, Lord. Let's pray for a minute for all the kids we have, small and big, those who be the Lord and who, who does the serve God, let's pray together now for a minute. Jesus, we pray for the children of this church. Hallelujah. We pray for our sons and daughters, small, teenage, and grown up sons and daughters. We pray in Jesus, keep holding them, Lord. Keep doing your will in their lives, Lord. And bless those who serve you even more, Lord. And save, bring back touch and change lives of those who doesn't serve you, Jesus. Bring them back to the kingdom, Jesus. Bring them back, Lord, to the, to the kingdom, Jesus. We all pray in agreement for our kids. Save them, Jesus. Save them, Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch them, Jesus, where they are. Bring them back to light, Jesus. Speak to them. We have no words, maybe no more words to say. And they know everything, but Jesus, you can only change hearts. You only want who can change hearts. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray for healing. I'm not going to call anybody body here, up here, but if you have any sickness in your body, any struggle in your health, just raise your hand and we will pray together. Just raise your hand. The Bible, Bible said, pray for each other to be healed. So let's do that. Let's pray for each other. Raise your hand, please, and keep your hand up. And those, look around. If you see person next to you raising your hand, maybe you also raise your hand. So let's pray for each other. Lay your hand on him and let's pray and give same time. Pray and serve same time. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for supernatural healing, Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We're proclaiming healing of the Lord. Healing of the Lord. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be restored in your body in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now, be healed. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We receive your healing, Jesus. Say to him, thank you, Jesus, for my healing. I receive my healing. I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So for closing, I would love to pray. And Pastor, I would love you to pray for Israel, for us as well. But I would love to pray for you. There is ancient biblical prayer given by God himself to Moses. And he said, that's, that's the prayer. Give this prayer. Pass on this prayer to Aaron. Aaron and let him bless people of Israel. And when you will say these words over my people, they will be blessed. Which is mean, behold, protected, you know, blessed financially, blessed in relationship, in business, in every level of their lives. Okay? I would love to pray for you in Hebrew. Is it okay? I don't remember to quote in English, but I know it in Hebrew. So just close your eyes, just open your hands, and just receive God's blessing, and I will pray. Hallelujah. Ivarechecha Adonai veishmerecha. Yaer Adonai panav elecha veikonecha. Yaer Adonai panav elecha veyasem lecha shalom. Beshem Yeshua Mashiach, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I just asked for the buckets put up, up at the front again because we're going to take up an offering. And you know what? If I, as I was standing there, I thought, what an opportunity to sow seeds towards Israel. You know? And, and to believe God for great things to happen there. I, I, I never realized uh, several things that you had spoke about this morning, but now I, I understand even more how important it is to have the gospel. I, I, I never realized for the end times to happen that the gospel had to be preached in all of Israel. And I'm like, wow. We have, we have so much, so much. Mm. 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 You know, um, this last, what, two years? I, I haven't traveled anywhere other than to Ethiopia. And we started a Bible school there. Not myself. I... I instigated it and it's uh, Jerry Savelle's Bible school started there's 50 students they're all like it's like they'll influence over a million people but the interesting thing is the the people that I'm connected with they're they're Ethiopian Jews they tell me they tell you know it's so interesting because God speaks to them in, in dreams and visions. And I'm like, man, I wish I was Jewish. It'd be so cool. <laughs> I, got, I got to listen to this still small voice on the inside. I, want, I, want, I really encourage you to come and plant a seed this morning. And then when you plant a seed, towards Israel, just go, go back, have a seat, because I want to just run through a few things with you, okay? And remember, we always, and starting the month of May, we have youth every Friday night, and we have outreach every Saturday afternoon. So we're, we started a new thing. Amen. Come on up, Peter. Praise God. I'm planting a seed in the name of Jesus for towards Israel that the gospel gets sown in that country in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God. I'm thanking you, Father God, for everyone that's planting a seed, Father. That is who he is. Those of you online, you can plant your seeds in Jesus' name. Amen.
worship you. I worship you. You're healing right now. In the darkness, He's here right my now. God, that is who you are. He's touching your heart, man. Come on. Father God, I thank you right now. Everyone that has sowed a seed into, into Israel. Wow, that, I, I just keep getting inside of me. They, they, they believe that God prospers them. In every area, every way. So Father God, I'm thanking you that we're putting our faith to believe the same thing. That we would prosper to be able to be blessings to other people. Father God, that we'd be distribution centers to help others. And Father God, I give you praise. I give you glory for it. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, yeah. amen. Ha have a seat. Sveta, come down here. He wants to. Um... You, you can stay there because let's sing that song one more time. Just. Just, just give us a minute. Pastor wanted to pray for us. visible would be uh, the celebration you know victory of God but God is going to do something and vision I saw in the spirit it was very powerful very powerful so God is setting you for next decade of miracles and wonders and missions hallelujah so church of God let's stand together and we would love to pray for your pastors and maybe God will say something more to them but anyway it's a blessing to pray so Tim should we start raise your hands toward them let's pray father i thank you for this mighty couple father i thank you for this church father 20 years wow wonderful father i thank you for an increase in the anointing on this church in jesus name the anointing is increasing on the church it's it's starting here and it's flowing there hallelujah there's new things God's speaking to you, more powerful things, more wonderful things, just like he has in the past. It's not stopping. It's increasing. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I'm taking you, I'm directing you, I'm guiding you in places you've not been, directions you've never been, but it's from me, says the Lord, and I'm taking you with me. I'm not sending you by yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The anointing on you is not only for you, but it's for them. And it's not yeah. just for the people in this church, right. but it's for people that are coming. Yes. Multitudes of people coming into my kingdom, says the Lord, yes. through your ministry. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Hima da 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 
Hima malada da to to go to the Karaba. Hima malada da da karada karaba. Hallelujah. Let it be, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hima bada da kada da 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 ba da ba. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I could hear in the spirit the anointing God gave you and teaching and approach when you teach. Young generation need it. So God is going to open for you, pastor, pastors, uh, doors to impact, to touch, to establish, and to bless young generation of leaders. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pastors and leaders. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Pray for Israel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. For Israel, Israel, or Israel? Israel. Both. <laughs> Father God, we lift up Israel, Father, yes. as a, as a, as a, uh, a point con of contact for us, for the nation of Israel even. Father, we lift up both, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just speak peace, peace, peace. Peace be still over nation of Israel. Peace be still over Pastor Israel and his ministry, yes. family, yes. and everything and anything yes. concerning him. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that in that peace, he's able to hear your voice, the direction, the next step he's to take. Yeah. We thank you, Father God, for blessing on Israel. Pastor Israel, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just pray that the, his ministry touches the ends of the world, the ends of Israel, but the ends of the world, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done through this ministry, through, through, through Pastor Israel, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the seed that has been planted, Father, that it's already bring, bringing an abundant harvest, yes. but the greater is yet to come. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. we see greater, greater influx, yes, People joining in, people getting saved, people are being touched with this ministry. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Lord, that the doors are opening up in front of him. And he will walk without any obstacle. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, whatever needs to be done, even in these days and months ahead, with the new building, Father, we thank yeah. you that everything falls into place. Yes. Everything comes to comes to pass in Jesus' name. That the favor of God is over him, over this ministry, yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God, that people, authorities, whoever, they go out of their way to do stuff for them, to do things for them. They don't even know why and how. They will just know they have to do it. Yes. But we know it's because of the favor of God, the favor of God in the name of Jesus. And truly, yeah, that Pastor Israel will experience the table that the Lord is going to, to, to set uh, the table for Israel, Pastor Israel, in the presence of of any and every opposition yes. that he, he can he faces in israel in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we thank you father god for your supernatural protection over him and his family his ministry in jesus name in jesus name no harm no evil can come near them the blood of jesus covers protects them causes all yes. evil to pass over him yes. in jesus name in Jesus' name, health and wholeness yes. over them. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. Yes. amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. What a blessing to pray for Israel, Israel and Israel. You know what, I think it's, a, it's such a blessing for us hallelujah. and for our church. 
There is a spiritual significance to that. We need to yes. understand that. Yes. We may not see it and understand it now, Hallelujah. but there is significance. And we've always prayed for Israel, for nation of Israel. But somehow, with you being here, there's this something special about it. I believe Amen. And it's, it will affect us, our church. It will affect each one of you individually. I know something. Amen? Yes. Amen. Something great. Something great is, is taking place right now. Amen. Just, just stay here. Those of you that are watching on the Internet, I pray a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. I, I command all sickness, all diseases to leave your body. I thank you, Father God, for prosperity enter into their lives in every area of their lives. And Father, I thank you that they are blessed by this. And I thank you, Father God, for an amazing week for them. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 Just a second. Hallelujah.